Go to tapjars.com to learn dreams, engage my services, and support the channel. So now I'll dive into what exactly this is sending, and then go into how I converted it to be like a normal local value. Let's just make an orb that's kind of like that, and a bit of glow. And we're going to, to emit this constantly wherever this is telling us to, relative to uh, the character, so we can see it. Um, all the time. So uh, we've got an emitter and we do that. No speed, zero time between emits and if you put two, if you put one it doesn't always uh, show it. So I often put two instead just in case. Uh, just in edit mode it kind of sometimes forgets to actually render it. We'll get the position of this character with a tag and so I'll move the tags gizmo to on the grid between the feet like that and then we'll use a we'll use a splitter to split the scene space transform which contains a whole load of stuff one of which is the position so if we add this value to the position um, and remember this is like a it's like a three number thing just like the position is a three number thing so we can just add those together with a simple calculator and that'll be fine and then wire that into the scene space transform of the emitter so we're telling the emitter where to emit that that uh, sphere and we don't want it to be collidable and stuff we make this non-movable and non-collidable and we can delete the ground uh, we wired the wrong thing into it, so we need to wire the motion sensor into the calculator. And we'll wire that into the uh, lean as well, so we can see like what the camera relative stuff is doing and what this ball is doing. So when we uh, lean left, the ball is kind of coming towards us. And if we, if I tilt the controller up, it's kind of going to the right of the uh, camera view. And if I tilt it forward, it's going left. So it's like the um, tilting forward and back is along the x-axis, left and right axis, uh, based on the camera view. And then tilting left is along the z-axis, towards and away from the camera view. And then if I tilt it like, t like uh, turn turning a steering wheel left, it goes up and down relative to the camera view. So like if I'm looking down here and I tilt it uh, tilt it up, then it's still to the right of the camera view. Um, and like this is still towards us and all that kind of stuff. So we can kind of get a sense of what those values are doing. So now let's look at the values that we get from it. Yeah, so um, if we tilt up, we can see that the the first one, which is um, corresponding to X, is moving is moving negatively. So if we turn around here, we can tilt the controller towards us, and we get a higher value until we go all the way around. It goes up to pi, and then it goes to negative pi around the edge like that. And then it comes back around until we get to zero again. And that's the same for all of them. They go around from positive pi to negative pi, which means it's measuring an angle of um, how we're rotating the controller in radians, because there's two pi radians in a circle. So we're kind of going full circle with our controller, and we're getting two pi radians going on, something like that. So it is actually a rotation going on in here, but it's not a rotation in degrees. It's a rotation in uh, radians or something like that. And that's what this lean is looking for. So if we have a if we have a combiner, it has a special rotation type for fat wires, uh, which this is not. This is just a three number because the rotation expects degrees. So 360 degrees in a circle instead of 
um, two pi radians in a circle. Uh, now, there's actually two modes on a rotation fat wire can be on. One is your pitch and roll, which are these, and they're more kind of easy to understand and uh, use for things. A splitter has the same thing when you're splitting a uh, rotation. You can just change it there as well. Uh, but also it has axis and angle, which is an X, Y, and Z. And that's exactly what we're getting here, an X, Y, and Z, but we're getting radians instead of degrees. So if I were to wire these straight in here, they actually correspond to what uh, what the rotations are that we're getting. And if I put that in the lean again, it will it will this doesn't actually do anything. It will send these values in exactly the same way to the lean, and work exactly the same way. So that's why the motion sensor is the way it is. But now, how do we turn it from this camera relative thing to a kind of local space ignoring the camera thing? So let's just delete the chips for now and we'll remake them. So on the grid, I'll make a new head tracker. So the head tracker matches the view of the player. Um, so we'll need to like get some information from that. Um, it actually has, let's just scope that in like that. It has these outputs for the X direction, which is pointing over there, the Y direction pointing up there, and the Z direction pointing there, all there. I can't remember. Uh, you'll have to check out the other tutorial about the head tracker for that. So we want to send these out to any anything that cares about what the what those directions are, because we're going to use those directions to kind of cancel out the camera relativeness. So I'm going to put into this chip some transmitters so i'm going to call it view direction x and then view direction y view direction z and then i wire those in Cool. And then I can receive those in here. So I'll get a receiver. And we're just going to do the X one for now. Because, uh, yeah, and then the others will just kind of make sense, hopefully. We've got the X direction of the camera. And then we've got this other arrow, which is pointing in some random direction, which is based on... Um, how we're holding the controller, what, what the tilt is and things. So we want to know like um, how how right we uh, this arrow is. We've got this arrow. How right is that? If this was in 2D, we could like draw a line down like this. Like that. Uh, and make it a dotted line. So then it's like, it's not 100% right. It's like 0.8. It's like 80% right or something. And that would be how right we are going. If the camera was pointing in this direction um, and the arrow was still pointing in like a fun... This is this is a whole new directions, right? Um, this is pointing like along the x-axis effectively. If this was pointing in some random direction into the scene and we're still holding the controller in the same kind of funny way, then we're still going to get... We're going to get this arrow and that's pointing in a different direction as well. But relative to this rightness arrow, we're still pointing, we're still getting like an 80% right going on. Um, and to get that kind of how much of uh, this arrow we've got on this arrow, uh, we can get the dot product. That's what the dot product is. I've used that in a few tutorials and there's a tutorial um, exactly on the dot product. So... I'll leave that for now, but I'll just use it here. So so we get our first arrow, the black arrow, and wire it in here. And we got our second arrow here. Oh, let's set that to scene. Got the, uh, the tan arrow, and then we are going to dot product the two of them. 
And in dreams, that doesn't take too long. We can just use, we multiply them together. Oh, um, multiply. And then we use a splitter to get the separate parts. So this would, this would be like X multiplied by X. And then we get that result out of here. Y by Y, we get that. And Z by Z, we get that. And then we add them all up. So we could do that with multiple calculators, or we can wire them all into the same A of the calculator, and then use L1 and X to use blend, which averages them out. So it adds them up, then divides by three, and then we multiply that by three to get the added up number. And then this is the dot product. If we go and instead of emitting at that position, we'll make a new position. So let's make a three number. We'll make our local version and then wire that into here. So we've got a dot product of X, how, how right it is. And we'll put that in there and we'll add that to a, the position of the tag and emit stuff there. So it's not going to do anything with the Y and the Z. So if I tilt like, like this way or this way, nothing's going to really happen. But if I tilt towards me, it's going changing on the X axis where it's emitting. And if we change the camera and I pull, uh, if I push away, it'll be easier to see. It doesn't care what the camera's doing. It's staying in the same position. So now we've got this kind of raw local version instead of it being camera relative. And then we do the same for the other two. Okay, so now I'll put it in like a funny position. And now that isn't changing as I change the orientation of the camera because it's kind of adjusting and uh, compensating for the camera relative nature that it normally is. So it's always like in front of the puppet, for example. And so that's how you do that. You just have this component that gets the actual directions of the view. And then we dot product it with the... Um, with the motion sensor for the different um, directions. And that's it. And then you get a result of that. And that's exactly what we're doing in here. So these these are just the dot products kind of wrapped up. But uh, yeah, so it's fairly simple, but um, it takes a while to like even get your head around what this value even is at the start and how it's uh, the radians and how it's camera relative and then knowing how to take something that's camera relative and then unrelative it so that it's just a normal raw local value so if i use this into the lean instead so funny angle again and it's just keeping that that um, lean for the character so it's it's not changing depending on the camera now if you wanted to do something like emit an object based on this orientation uh, it's a little bit tricky but not that tricky once you know how so i'm going to import this uh, ps4 controller uh, cool and then we're going to emit that at some position so i'm going to have another tag like off to the side like that. So we're going to emit this with that orientation at that position. So um, I'll just uh, split the tag so I can get the position. And then we'll use this as the uh, orientation. So we we'll want to like build a uh, scene space transform with a position and an orientation. Um, and the scale is one by default, so that's fine. And now we'll wire that into the emitter and have it emit the, the controller. And you can already see it's like doing something. Yeah, so we want this to be a rotation on that axis and angle thing. Um, but you can see it's like moving only very slightly and it's that's not what we really want. That's because this is in radians, which is only up to pi or negative pi, but it should be on degrees because we are making an actual rotation now. 
So if we multiply this rotation by the ratio, so um, so it's 360 degrees divided by one rotation of radians, which is is uh, 6.2, very roughly. Cool. Uh, so if we multiply that by this, then that will kind of convert it into degrees, and then we'll wire that into the orientation. So now it's like matching perfectly. Oh, because um, that's one thing to be aware of. Because the imp is out, it you know how it butts up at the edges at the edges of the screen. That actually affects the uh, motion sensor output. So if I go over here, now it's not changing those values at all, even though I'm holding it differently. If we use a global settings gadget and turn off allow imps, it still does it. So like you can see the values not changing when I go up and up and up or down or right or left, they get stopped by the um, edge of the screen still. So we need to actually possess something. So this object has that this um, controller sensor has to be on an object so that we can properly possess that object and then it will properly let us hide the imp. Uh, so let's make that invisible. Okay. Okay, so now like tilting left, tilting right, towards us, away from us. And if we hold it at a funny angle, it like stays at that angle because we're using our local solution. So that's all that this is doing. It's uh, it's using either the original thing converted into degrees, um, which is camera relative. So it like changes as we move around. Um, or it goes into our local version where it doesn't care about the camera. And now you can use that for animating and things. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something interesting. Go to patreon.com slash tapgiles to learn something new every day.